we're trying to, I'm trying to work on things with them, and I can't because everybody's so mean to me, and everybody just keeps <laughs> calling me names, <gasps> like I'm really tired of social media, and I'm almost at the edge of giving up on everything because people don't know how to treat me like a decent human being. And I just want to prove this bitch that I am better than her because I am so evil. Hello ladies and gentlemen, a Jay here, the YouTuber who's entirely a figment of your imagination. You've been dreaming this entire time, please wake up. In this video, I will be discussing Zoe Laverne, who was once a major personality on Musical.ly slash TikTok. Currently, she has about 22 million followers. Laverne was infamously in a toxic relationship with her ex Cody Orlove and even cheated on him. She also got into drama with Charlie D'Amelio. In addition, Zoe was criticized for kissing a 13-year-old fan when she was 19. This is the rise and fall of Zoe Laverne. Before I get into it, I just want to thank today's sponsor, Felix Grey. Felix Grey makes the blue light glasses that started it all. The company originally set out to create eyewear that improved daily screen time and has been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. For example, Felix Grey lenses filter 15 times more blue light which can make screen time tough on eyes and disturb sleep. As a result, they created some amazing glasses that prevent negative health effects. The frames are also pretty cool looking and sleek. Felix Grey offers classic frame styles made from acetate and hand finish for a durable, lightweight, and really comfortable pair of glasses. As a night owl who stays up till 2 or 3 a.m., I've been looking for ways to fall asleep earlier. Thankfully, I received a pair of stylish clear glasses a week ago that have significantly reduced my eye strain. In fact, my eyes don't feel as tired at the end of the day and I'm finally able to fall asleep sooner. Oh, and their blue light lenses are available in prescription and non-prescription. Get 10% off Felix Grey with code J10 at checkout. That's promo code J10 and this offer will only be valid for 30 days. Now back to the video. Zoe Laverne Pemberton was born on June 3rd, 2001 in Indiana. She started her career on the app Musical.ly which was later purchased by TikTok. Zoe often danced, hosted live streams, and lip synced to trending songs. Around 2016, she skyrocketed in popularity and became one of the biggest personalities on the platform. Unfortunately though, Laverne was made fun of by her classmates so much she ended up getting homeschooled. Early on, it was evident she was very interested in fame and even mentioned her dream was to live in LA. I made about 30 grand, 40 grand, just by going live and talking with my supporters and them sending me gifts. I hope that I get to live in LA, that's my dream. Around December 2017, Laverne shifted her brand from that of a solo female influencer to a relationship focused one. You see, she began dating fellow Musical.ly star Cody Orlove and constantly capitalized on it. The two went on tour, released a single called Thinking of You and made a joint YouTube channel named Cody and Zoe which amassed over 1 million subscribers. And while the pair was pretty active and were affectionately called Zodi by their fans, notably they mainly posted couple prank videos. One of them, titled Cheating on My Boyfriend Prank, was their most popular with about 5.6 million views as of today. In it, Zoe pretended to make plans with another guy while Cody overheard. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be pretending that I'm talking to another guy on the phone, and I'm going to be acting like I'm making plans with him tonight. I'm in the other room right now, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do this. However, he seemed to genuinely get hurt when he thought she actually cheated on him. No, he's leaving tonight, so he won't, he won't be able to know at 8. Hey. Yeah. Who the hell are you talking to? I'm gonna go. Bye. You're cheating on me. No, I'm not. Cody. Cody, say hi to YouTube. Oh, you're not freaking me. Most of their uploads were borderline toxic with titles like I said my ex's name in my sleep, hickey prank on my girlfriend, and I cheated on my boyfriend with a gay guy. But they did have some typical relationship content mixed in with outfit swaps and various challenges. Their chaotic relationship brought in a massive amount of views and was honestly their recipe for success. And while in February 2019, ironically the month of Valentine's Day, it was revealed Laverne cheated on Orlove with a TikToker named Drake Austin. It turns out their pranks aged worse than buttermilk left out in the New Delhi sun. As a result, the pair broke up. Initially, Zoe denied cheating. Never. Okay, never. Okay, that's literally Cody's whole comment section on his freaking live right now on Musical.ly. It's literally all oh, Zoe cheated. No, I didn't. But she then admitted to kissing Drake, no not that one, and claimed he kept trying to get with her. Cody was in front of me, and in the Uber, he was next to me. Tell me how physically I can look at you and say, Drake, kiss me. Really? Really? Tell me, okay? I may have kissed you, which is the most disgusting thing I've ever done, and I will never do it again. 
Okay? Never do it again. That was the lit. Okay, I'm done. And you want to know something else? This boy has tried to get with me, has tried to get with me so many times. Notably, Zoe quickly backtracked and revealed it was actually her who made the first move. Drake, so, didn't, Drake, Drake didn't come on to me, but he said he said that he didn't like do anything. Like he he was trying to push me away, but that's not true. But you. But I like, did. But it down. was it was all me. It was all me. Laverne's despicable actions greatly upset people, which caused her to receive death threats and break down on Instagram Live. I mean that you have to sit there and hate on me and tell me to kill myself and tell me that nobody's gonna want me. <laughs> just please leave me alone. I mean, please just stop. I'm so over it. Please stop hating on me. I don't want to. I don't want to read it anymore. <laughs> It's hurting me, and I didn't want to go live and say that, but it literally is. It's bothering me so much. Unfortunately, the situation got worse on May 26, 2019, when Cody uploaded a video called What Really Happened. In it, he revealed she kissed him without his consent after their breakup when they were recording a video together. She kissed me without having my permission, which is 100% true. The first time that we kissed in LA, I was sucking my lips in, and I was not kissing her back at all. I was literally telling her that we should not be doing this and that I do not like her. Orlov went on to say another time she tried to take off his pants for five minutes straight. The next situation that happened in LA was Zoe was trying to take my pants off. And it was a rough night. Oliver was there, Sebastian was there, my sister was there. They all saw it happening. We were all telling Zoe to chill and to calm down. And she says in this audio recording call that she did it as a joke, which I do not believe because continuously for five to 10 minutes trying to take my pants off. It was evident Laverne was extremely manipulative and tried her best to control Cody. Oddly, the two got back together again, but then broke up roughly a year later in June, 2020. This time though, she accused Orla of a physical abuse. Cody and I got into an argument and he was very upset with me because I was on the phone with supporters. And he hit me. Audio of a fight in which she shouted at him to let go even became public. Cody later responded to the drama on Instagram by saying he only grabbed her arm and that there were never any marks or physical damage between the two of them. Forced to clear his name, Orlov uploaded a video claiming Zoe often threatened to harm herself whenever he tried to break up with her. And I'm not trying to cause drama, but the thing is, Zoe did beg for me. I had to constantly break up with her over and over and over again, and it, and it truly, truly hurt me because I was trapped. I was literally trapped. Like, how would you feel? I don't know if anyone of you guys have been in an actual relationship, but if you're like older of the age of like 16 and, you're, and your boyfriend or girlfriend is like, I'm killing myself, I'm killing myself if you break up with me, that is terrible. On top of that, he said Laverne frequently FaceTimed her stands after they fought. If me and Zoe got into an argument, she would leave and FaceTime them right away. She would exaggerate to the fullest of whatever happened to her favorites. She needs her whole world to revolve around people who will worship everything she does and take her side on everything. Overall, their relationship was extremely unhealthy and the ensuing drama made Zoe look very bad. In July 2020, her reputation sunk further than the Titanic. It all began when a video of Zoe throwing a tantrum surfaced online after Charlie D'Amelio was about to pass her and TikTok followers. In it, she called D'Amelio, who was only 15 years old at the time, a bitch. I've been literally crying about this for like an hour because it's just so, like, pathetic that, like, she just comes in and, like, almost passes. Like, she's so close to passing me and everybody's reminding me that she's gonna pass me. And I just want to prove this bitch that I am better than her because I am so f***ing Laverne and I am literally the star of TikTok. And TikTok is putting me down and boosting her up and I'm about to go to TikTok headquarters and strangle their necks. To make matters worse, audio later surfaced in which Laverne called Charlie a whore. You're gonna defend a fucking little stinky ass whore. Don't 
fucking ring me in the car. I'm not gonna sit in there and act like I like Charlie D'Amelio. D'Amelio then responded by commenting, is this you? Caught red-handed, Zoe immediately apologized by saying she was just mad. She also claimed she sent Charlie multiple messages saying sorry. Um, I reached out to Charlie and I apologized to her. I sent her multiple paragraphs after paragraphs apologizing to her and telling her that I'm sorry and that I didn't mean what I said and that I was just mad and I let all of my anger and emotions get the best of me and I was left on scene. So I didn't know if she hated me. I didn't know if she didn't I just felt like she didn't like me or that she hated me. So it wasn't right what I said about her and I realized that and I'm sorry. In April 2022, Zoe backtracked and called Charlie out for being rude and leaving her on red. Then D'Amelio's original response found its way to the internet. It read, You obviously have many of your own problems that you need to work out and the fact that you're taking them out on me shows how truly insecure you are. You're showing all of your fans that it is okay to bring down other people by calling them, as well as many other truly disgusting remarks. I would watch what you say because people are definitely realizing that you are genuinely just not a good person. I do not want to be your friend, nor do I think we will ever be. You are not the type of person I like to surround myself with, so please do not contact me again. In late October 2020, Cody Orlov's Instagram was hacked. Interestingly, one message he received from a girl named Amber Van Pelt discussed why she stopped talking to Zoe. It turned out Amber felt uncomfortable because of Zoe's interactions with an underage fan. I left because of her interactions with, they got very intense and it's something I do not stand by whatsoever. It's... I had told Zoe that if she stopped and minimized contact with him that she wouldn't have to lose me and it wouldn't have to come to that. So she changed her story and said she was joking about the things with, but I knew at that point she was lying and they were both lying. The fan was later revealed to be a boy named Connor. He and Laverne made multiple TikToks together with some being quite sexual. In order to prevent the situation from escalating, Zoe claimed that she knew better than to do anything with a minor. And it's time that I speak on it because I'm sick of it. I don't know where this screenshot came from. I don't know if Amber actually sent it. I don't know if it's photoshopped. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it was said, whatever the case is, but I am here to tell the truth and tell you that I am 19 years old and I know better than to do anything with a 13 year old minor. However, days after the hack, a damning video surfaced online showing Zoe and Connor kissing. Notably, she was 19 while Connor was only 13. I honestly don't know why she was friends with a minor six years younger than her in the first place. Zoe was caught lying and trying to manipulate the narrative just like she did after her breakup with Cody. This sparked massive outrage and many people were upset she crossed the serious boundary with an impressionable kid. Laverne then defended herself in a live stream by saying she didn't groom Connor, wasn't a pedo, and that everything was blown out of proportion by social media. And it really hurts me that a bunch of people think that I'm this monster and that I'm and that I'm a groomer and stuff. I never groomed Connor. I would never do that. I would never do anything without his consent. And we didn't do anything besides kiss. It's not as bad as everybody's making it out to be. Yes, it is bad. What happened? The situation that happened is bad. Yes. But people are making it out to be something bigger than it is. And it's not something that Connor and I wanted to be on social media. She went on to chastise people for criticizing her and mentioned she was going to therapy. When I get older and I have kids, I will never let my kids act the way that some of you do. And I know that if a lot of your parents knew how you talked online and knew how you treated people, y'all probably wouldn't even have phones because it's ridiculous. But like I said, since I'm Zoe and I'm always the person that everybody's out to get, no one's gonna ever take my side on anything and no one's ever going to make um, me seem like a better person. No one's gonna give me a chance, but I do start therapy this week and I am gonna be talking to someone. Interestingly, Connor came to her defense but also admitted to not being mentally stable due to the backlash. I just need a few days to prepare for all of this and I need a few days to bring up my mental health. I'm truly not doing it. Okay. I mean, I understand because he was only 13 years old and was a victim of Zoe's reckless behavior. It's disgusting she kissed the minor and may have possibly damaged him for life. I genuinely don't think she cared at all about how everything would affect him. At this point, Zoe's career was pretty much over. She had just done too many controversial things for too long. The damage was significantly beyond repair. In November 2020, Laverne moved back to Indiana and began dating TikToker Dawson Day. After two months, she announced she was pregnant and soon gave birth to a daughter named Emerson. But not even that was drama free. You see, Zoe told people her placenta burst and that she almost lost her life after undergoing an emergency C-section. She was then called out for charging fans $15 in order to get exclusive photos of her baby. 
Interestingly, she defended herself saying I have to work to make sure I can pay for my child while also going to the ICU every single day. A few days after giving birth, Zoe got married to Dawson. Currently, they run a family YouTube channel called Zoe Laverne the Day Family. Because you know, just being called the Day Family wouldn't be narcissistic enough. Ultimately, Zoe Laverne had a pretty significant downfall. She was once the so-called star of TikTok but crashed and burned like an Indian-made Formula One car. First, she had a toxic relationship with her ex Cody and lied about being physically abused. Then she attacked Charlie D'Amelio for being more successful than her. Finally, Laverne kissed a minor. It's not hard to see why she ruined her reputation. Zoe lied to everyone and tried to control the narrative every step of the way. Currently, she averages around 200,000 views on TikTok, which is a significant drop from before. Yes, I understand she is only 20 and was very young when everything happened. However, I'm disgusted by her actions and don't think she took enough accountability. As a mother and wife, it's more important than ever she works on her issues. Otherwise, her daughter will grow up in an unstable environment. I truly hope Zoe learns from her mistakes and becomes a better person. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel because it really helps me out. Oh, and feel free to follow me on Instagram at internetaj for some life updates if you're interested. See you in the next one.